The eye is a wonder of evolution. However, having worn glasses since I was nine years old, I also know that it doesn't always work perfectly. In today's episode, we explore how might being in a different environment, such as being high up in the mountains, affect our vision. The eye is generally well built to reduce risk of damage. It is actually a pretty large organ, as anyone who has dissected a cow's eyes in high school science may recall. It is well encased inside our eye sockets, such that most of it is very well protected. Our eyebrows help to keep sweat from getting into our eyes, while our eyelashes and eyelids work very rapidly and reflexively to keep out stray dust and debris. As a quick primer on how the eye works, it consists of a cornea at the front, a lens, vitreous fluid within the eyeball, and light-sensitive nerves in the retina, which then sends information to the brain through the optic nerve. The cornea and lens refracts or bends light to land in the correct spot on the retina. In turn, an extensive network of blood vessels supply the retina. So vision may become impaired if the cornea changes, thus changing the refraction of light so that it's not properly focused at the retina. Another way that vision can be impaired is if there's reduced oxygen supply to either the retina itself or to the brain in general. How might the cornea change in different environments? The cornea is kept moist by the tear ducts, and that moisture is normally factored into the amount of light refraction. So environmental changes like ultraviolet or UV radiation, wind, very dry air, and also cold temperatures can affect the moisture level and therefore the optical quality of the cornea. When we go up to altitude in the high mountains, such as at Everest Base Camp, there's less total air pressure and therefore lower oxygen availability. The air is also cold and dry as we go up in altitude, and there is also often a lot more wind. This cold, dry, and windy air can dry out the cornea and acutely alter vision, along with giving us dry eye syndrome. One way to help with this is with eye drops. Because there's less atmosphere protecting us from the sun at altitude, there's also more solar radiation and especially UV radiation. If not protected by special mountaineering sunglasses or goggles, that high level of UV can damage the cornea, almost like getting it sunburnt. This photokeratitis is commonly called snow blindness and can cause excessive tearing and blinking, pain, and the inability to tolerate light. This can take some days to resolve and put a mountaineer in extreme danger due to an inability to see. Long term, high solar radiation exposure may also lead to cataracts of the eye, which might require surgery to correct. High altitude can also affect the extensive network of small blood vessels within the eye. The brain and also the eye generally has a well-developed system to control local blood flow and pressure, but this can be overwhelmed. In the left photo, we see damage to the retina from the reduced pressure at altitude leading to burst blood vessels. There's also often very heavy effort involved in climbing or exercise at altitude causing high spikes in blood pressure. In the right photo, we have the retina of a climber who skied from the summit of Everest, and we see that the extreme effort caused a burst blood vessel in the retina right near the disc where the optic nerve enters. These small hemorrhages will usually self-repair and fade after some months, but can also become permanent and cause long-term vision problems. I hope that this has opened your eyes to the fascinating world of environmental physiology. I'm Professor Stephen Chung, and I run the Environmental Ergonomics Lab at Brock University in Canada. We post new episodes on different topics in environmental physiology every Wednesday. Thanks for watching. See you next time.